Well, hey, guys, we've been working for a long time uh, to talking about brainstorming, debating, how do we create a discipleship culture at our church? You know, we've been to Manila, we've talked to the leaders at Victory, we've read Wiki Church, we've read other books, and uh, I think it's time now for us to really articulate this to our leaders. And so the, the thing that we're going to use is what we want to call boot camp, and boot camp is this thing right here. You know, everyone's on a journey, and uh, we need to remind them that someone helped them to learn and live truth, and that and we want to move them now and in, in move them from being a starter to a believer. We've already done that, but now we want to move them to being a leader. This is our whole goal. And so, you know, we the thing we've done in our church and really even in, in our some of our groups that we've already been leading is we've done this well that in the context of this group, let's say the group is the blue circle, you know, we've taught people things from the Bible like Genesis, Galatians. We've taught them about freedom and parenting and pain, and and so not just not just head stuff, but we've taught them how to connect and to give and to worship and to pray and to serve and all this stuff. And we're the ones that have helped people to learn and live truth if, for the most part. But but now what we need to do is we need to move those people out and get them in the game. We need to remind them that it's not about them. That everyone's on the journey. It's time for them to help others learn and live truth. And that's what boot camp is all about. So here's what I want us to do. I, I've, I've put in order what I think are nine axioms that will really help us to explain this to our leaders, get everyone on the same page, and move everybody forward. Now, we're not set on all these terms. We're not set on even on whether there's nine axioms. We're not even set on whether it's called boot camp. But for right now, let's just go through this together, hit pause, and talk about each of these axioms as we go through this real quickly. Let's get the big picture, and then let's get this down in stone, and let's move our church forward and maybe even help some other churches to do the same thing. Okay, so here's axiom one, and it's all about discipleship. Axiom one is this, discipleship is movement. You know, again, I showed you this already, and we learned about this in Wiki Church that we need to engage people and establish people and then equip and empower. This is the part that we're working on right now. We're not real good at this. We've done a good job of moving people over here. We've moved them from being a starter to a believer, but now it's time for us to move people from believer to discipler because discipleship is movement. And a discipler moves people toward Jesus, by helping them learn and live truth. Truth is important. They have to learn and live truth in the context of genuine love. And the goal is what? We're moving them toward Jesus. We're moving them toward making Jesus the center of their life. And this is how Jesus led his own group. And it's the way we should lead ours. In this video, we'll make sure to talk about John 13 through 17. It's a great picture of Jesus as a leader, as a discipler. Now, we're not going to do that for now, but maybe you can talk a little bit about this first axiom, discipleship is movement. Do you like the terms? Do you think they land well? And we'll go on to the next axiom. Axiom two is all about the church. It's important that everyone understands that the local church is the hope of the world. And axiom two is this, great churches make disciples. Good churches make believers, and we've been a good church. We've done a good job of moving people from here to here because we have this great element called foundations to help establish them in the truth. And we've got church services that really engage people, and everyone's an inviter, and I think all of that's awesome. But we want to be great, and great churches equip believers and empower them to be leaders. This is what we're doing right here, and this is what we're doing with boot camp. Now, this is complete discipleship. And when we do this, the church will inevitably grow. We make disciples. Steve taught this in Wiki Church, Steve Morell, and God builds the church. Let's teach everybody that and show them their part in it, which is what the next axiom is all about. Axiom three is your role. You know, the role of the person we're bringing through this, this equipping piece, this boot camp. Axiom three is the fact that the servant is the one when he becomes the discipler, that he really is the key to a great church. A pastor can't properly disciple a growing church. If everyone looks to him for this, few people will learn and live truth in the context of genuine love. Uh, he, will he will be forced to fake relationships. We've all felt this as pastors. It's, we don't mean to. It's just that when people come up to us, we don't know all their names. We would love to, to help them learn and live truth. We'd love to have them in our small group, but we can only have so many people. So that, that, that means that if we don't empower others and equip them to step in, then our church can't be great. And that's the importance, that's critical importance of this equipping piece right here, this boot camp. And that need, naturally leads us to this axiom four, which is about the myth. And here it is, axiom four, it's a myth to think you're not mature enough 
to lead. We learned this again in, in Wiki Church. Ministry leads to maturity, not the other way around. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, we all should know it well. Now, there are a couple of real basic qualifiers. Number one, they should be submitted to Christ as word into a local church, obviously. But number two, they should be free from any major red flags. I'm talking about like major, major addictions or, or things like that, things that we would say, well, hold on, you're not really ready to lead. You need to, you need to be led still. You need to let someone pour truth into you so that you can live it out. So there's some examples of this in Galatians 5 and Colossians 3. But if as long as there aren't any major red flags, we need to encourage our people. They're good to go. Don't complicate it. They're ready to go. It's a myth to think you're not mature enough to lead. So Axiom 5 is all about the tools because if we can convince them that they can lead, we need to make sure that they know this. You don't have to teach. You just have to know your tools. They're probably looking at this circle and they're saying, well, yeah, that's great for you guys when you're, you guys know how to open up God's word and you know, you know how to talk about Galatians or about Genesis or about freedom in Christ or about parenting or about pain or you can you know, exposit on giving and worship and all these other things. And, and they say, well, what happens when I can't do that you know, in a, in a group setting? Setting, it's inevitable that there's going to be a time when when you you get derailed in your in your meeting because somebody has a need at the time. Maybe maybe you're planning on talking about Galatians, but but you've got someone who's dealing with a major crisis in marriage or parenting, and group leaders feel like I don't I don't know what to do in those situations. Well, that's what the tools are all about. That's why the group library is so important. You don't have to be a great teacher to be a great discipler. Get to know the, the tools that will help you articulate the right truth at the right time. And people, the group leaders need to know just simply how to discern who needs what and to be able to share it with boldness. But if they've got this huge, vast array of videos at their disposal so that just at any moment they can, they can pull an audible and they can, they can speak whatever needs to be spoken to their group at that time, and how powerful would that be? It's kind of like we're their group assistants sitting there with them the whole time. And I think all of them would feel so much more equipped if they had this tool. And that's why we need to be continuing to add to this group library, and we'll be doing it in these months ahead. So Axiom 6 is about genuine love because this is something that every group leader needs to understand. Love shouldn't be awkward. You know, we, we have to teach our disciples not to force themselves on others. Demonstrate your love for people gradually. Earn your place in their life as a leader. Slow as fast as Joey taught us. Start with a simple commitment to pray for them. This is so, so important. And let them know it. And then actually do it regularly. So we need to teach people what we've been doing as a church. And it's what's helped us to grow as a church is, is we know how not to have awkward moments in church. And group leaders need to uh, be taught how not to have these awkward moments. And some of those moments come when, when, when they force themselves on people. So we need to teach them that love shouldn't be awkward. Axiom 7 gets real practical. It's about starting your group. And here's the axiom, slow is fast. I think we should encourage people to start your group with two or three people that they like. Just pick a series that they would like. That's it. Just one series that they would like. Take it slow. You know, it might be believers. For most people, they'll probably be most comfortable with believers, whether they're students or servants. Maybe they know some, starter, some starters, some seekers that would be interested. But just the key is just people that you like that you think would come. Invite them to stay for one series and then invite them to stay for another series. And you pick it based on your group, right? You've got all this stuff available to you. You'll be surprised by how hungry these people are for someone like you. And then as a group leader, you just move them forward. Axiom 8 is then about inviting more people, growing your group. And here's the axiom, know your on-ramps. Don't forget to add people when the time is right. Invite people from your life or from your church. Maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a friend. Sometimes it's just from your life. Maybe your group is a good place to engage someone. Maybe they won't accept your invitation to church. Maybe, maybe if you do something on parenting in your group, they'll come. That's great. Or maybe it's just going to be from your church, and this is where we're going to have to help them. You know, as campus pastors, you know, make sure we're feeding people and, and people are equipped and we know who's equipped and, and when there's on-ramps at the different groups. And the group leaders need to view each new series as an opportunity to invite people in. We need to tell our group leaders, don't let your group become a dead end. Discipleship is movement. So if you look and after two, three, four years, all you have is a bunch of believers, all you have is a bunch of students, and you've never, you've never stirred it up, and you've never moved anyone from here to here, you've never invited anyone in to move them from here to here, then you're not doing discipleship, because discipleship is movement. 
And that brings us to our last axiom for leaders. And maybe there's more, maybe there's not. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll talk about this. But it's all about releasing people. You know, axiom nine is this. Know your off-ramps. Some people will leave your group. That's the bad off-ramp. That's the sad off-ramp. That's what hurts everybody's feelings. Don't take it personally. You can't force someone to follow. But here's the good off-ramp. The best off-ramp is equipping members to start their own groups. Now, don't force it. You'll, you'll know when to do this. Maybe it's, maybe it's six months. Maybe it's two years, whatever. But at some point, the most natural, the greatest disciple-making off-ramp is when you, when you take someone from being a servant to being a discipler. And how do you do that? Real simple. You bring them through this, you bring them through boot camp, you equip them, and then you empower them, and then they start their own group. And when that happens, you become a coach. And discipleship is moving now, and the church is growing, and this is going to change everything for all of us. I think we can all see that. Why don't you hit pause, talk about this, see if you think we've missed anything, if we need to take away an axiom or add an axiom. But see if you don't think that this is going to change our church and any other church that, that is exposed to it as well.